So what we're now going to do is build an orthogonal set of polynomials. Are you guys ready for it? So, we have to pick an inner product or else we can't even get the discussion started. Do you agree with me? We'll pick what's often called the standard inner product. Our initial basis that we'll start with that's not orthogonal will be 1x x squared. And I will also tell you, I've been looking forward to this moment, even though I've alluded to it before. As you were going through linear algebra, you must have thought of this basis as the best basis in the world. Am I right? Most convenient, most easy to decompose with respect to, all of those things. Be, be honest, is that true? So you will, I will tell you today why this is the absolute worst basis. I may have said it before, maybe even on Lemma. This is the absolute worst basis from a certain point of view, which you will uh, adopt. I think you'll adopt that point of view, even though it's arbitrary, because everything's arbitrary. Your choice of what's good is arbitrary. But I think you'll adopt it and you'll agree that, yes, it's a terrible, terrible, and then we'll have a, a, a new basis, P. No, not P. What am I doing? L. Because it's, it's associated with Legendre. These will be called Legendre polynomials. So L for Legendre. And why are Legendre polynomials special? Because they're orthogonal. That's more fundamental to your Gaussian quadrature plane. Because Gaussian quadrature is related to Legendre polynomials because they're orthogonal. So, or, who said Legendre polynomials? Yeah. yeah, that's why. Because they're orthogonal. That's what makes them special. Okay, we'll start building them. Well, we know this is one, right? Because the first one's unchanged. So, we'll just, I'll call them A, B, C just to follow that pattern. Although P1, P2, P3 would be better, but let's stick with A, B, C. And so A1 is the same as A, and so it's 1, 1. 1 the number, or 1 the polynomial? I still, um, however many years old, and whenever I see a number, I always tell myself, is it 1 the number, or 1 the vector? That habit never, never stops. Yes, 1 the polynomial. A2, no, B1. <laughs> B1 equals... It equals x minus 1 dotted with x divided by 1 dotted with 1, 1. Less pretty 1, because there are so many of them. Okay? Now you guys have to do a little bit of hard work and tell me what 1 dotted with x is and what 1 dotted with 1 is. Let's start with 1 over, with 1 dotted with x. How about we do it right here? 1 dotted with x equals integral from z, excuse me, from minus 1 to 1 of 1 times x dx. What is this integral without doing any work? Zero. Zero. Odd function integrated over a symmetric domain. Zero. So it doesn't even matter what 1 dotted with 1 is. This polynomial will be unchanged. That's zero. So one and x are already orthogonal. Kind of answers your question. So it's, orthogonalization still works. It's just that it does nothing. So x. Now let's go after c1. c1 equals Everything's right, right? Yeah, right. yeah, okay, yeah. I'm sorry? You have the answer. Okay, that can wait. You know, absorbing the question is much more important than getting the answer. Getting the answer is boring, because that's calculus. Understanding the question is exciting, because that's linear algebra. 
And that's coming from a person who loves algebra, who loves calculus more than linear algebra. But integrating polynomials is no longer my favorite thing. Okay, so let's start x squared with one. Okay, we have to divide it by x dotted with itself. Is that the same thing? No. No, we're dividing by one, one, one dies with one. Oh yeah, we're here. Whew. Big one dotted with one. Now, you're not going to find the antiderivative to do this, right? You're not going to do it this way. You'll just imagine a rectangle, one high, going from minus one to one. Please, right? Yes. Two. So it's minus two sixths, one third. So it's x squared minus one third. And then, zero. I know this is zero because this will end up being an odd function integrated over symmetric interval. So it's just x squared minus one third. x squared minus one third. So x squared minus one third. And then we could do the same thing for cubic, fourth order, and so forth. So this completes the exercise. But let's give what we just did some meaning. Because as I stated before, you could do this now for any space that has an inner product. But as you're doing it, you may, have, you may be asking yourself, why am I doing this? So you invented some uh, strange, arbitrary inner product. And now you've finagled your vectors so that they have a special property with respect to an arbitrary inner product. What's the great benefit of it? Well, they are orthogonal now, but... So the ultimate answer to that question, where it, go, where it results in maybe the most, one of the most real things of all, Gaussian quadrature. I'm calling it the most real of all because it's spectacular what it does. You can take a very, very complicated function, evaluate it at 10 points, add those points together in, with prescribed weights that are the same for many, many different smooth functions. Basically the same, unless, unless you're looking at functions that have special features like singularities. But if you look at any smooth function, and you evaluate it at 10 points, and add those together with 10 given weights, you will thus evaluate its integral to 16 digits. Tell me that's not a miracle. And it's all based on the logic of these polynomials. It's amazing. So if what I'm about to show you will still seem a little artificial, that will be undeniably amazing. So let's do an exercise that highlights these being orthogonal. 